Today's episode of Ask Finola How is actually the sixth episode of the Ask Finola How series and I think it's kind of going okay so I'm really happy about that. I've decided to theme every month so that we can kind of go a little bit deeper on this stuff. So this month, this month the theme is customers, okay? And this month, and in this first ex episode, which is episode six on customers, we're focusing on customers. And we ask this question, and I actually, I'm asking a question that I'm asked all the time, okay? And I'm asked it very regularly because it's a consistent theme that comes up with entrepreneurs. And this question is, how do you choose the customers that are right for you and say no to the ones that aren't? And this is a really great question, okay? And I'm asked it all the time. Uh, the no part I'm asked quite a lot of times is how to say no, and that's quite a tough one. But let's start at the very beginning, okay? Let's start with that part of the question, which, which is how do you choose the right customers and say no to the ones that are wrong for you, okay? And it's choose, because what I've come to understand over the last few years is that people, that entrepreneurs often don't feel like they have a choice, especially when they start out. But choice is really important in this, that you've got to choose the right customer for you as much as your customers choose to be, choose you as their provider, okay? And to take your mindset from this kind of passive recipient of customers to an active participant in the relationship between the two of you, okay? So we move from passive to active. And that mindset change actually sets the scene for a lot of what you're going to do later in marketing because the act of marketing and the act of targeting a customer is an active choice and when we choose we choose to act and that's the first thing to think about is how do i choose actively choose change my mindset instead of waiting for it to come but to actively move out out of ourselves to actively choose the customers that are right for us, okay? So that's my first thing. And I kind of want you to really reflect on that, that I'm in this mode of action, of actively choosing, because this is a trend with entrepreneurs to wait, to wait for, to put all of the energy into building the product and not all the energy into matching the product with the customer, aligning the product aligning the right customer with the right customer so that you can scale it. And that's a really great recipe for growth of any business, okay? So to make sure that we actively choose so we move away from just focusing on product and service and moving into the space of actively choosing who we are serving with this product and service, okay? So that, bed that in first. The next thing I want you to think about is as a step forward, Think about who you thought about when you first thought about the business. Now we've done all this work over the last few weeks and talking about strategy, about our mission, vision, purpose, purpose, mission, vision. So in your purpose, in your purpose, mission, vision is the first clue to the right customer for you. So who did you start to think of when you started to think of the customer you wanted to serve? Write it down. Write down, describe them. Even if that customer was you, a friend that had a challenge or a problem, a colleague, somebody like that, but you had somebody in mind to help, write it down. Write down everything you can about that customer and really kind of flesh it out a little because that gives you the tools for understanding who that target customer is. And that first step and that first clue is in your own purpose. Start there. Okay. The next thing that I want you to do is I want you to allow yourself to dream a little. I want you to allow yourself to imagine all of the people who may be like that first customer, that who else could this service or this product help you, help, you could help? Who else could you help with this product or service? This is the question I ask. Okay. So brainstorm it. Get a big sheet of paper, uh, ask your friends, ask your family, ask all of your colleagues because they all have ideas. They all have ideas of who, you know, you should try this customer. Now, I say this, that in this moment, you ask for all of this advice and this help 
and this input. And but be careful later on in the process, later on in the journey, because I've seen that same suggestion of ideas take somebody off course and they go off course and they can go off course for a year or two and end up having to come back to this place that we're starting in now, which is to understand why I'm here, who am I best able to serve? Who else can I serve with this product or service? This is the time to brainstorm. This is the time to dream. This is the time for expansion of ideas, expansion of who you can help, okay? And I want you to write them all down. Really important, write them all down. Get them out, get them out of your head, out of your heart, out of all of these ideas that come, okay? And capture them on paper, okay? When the reason we want to capture this brainstorming exercise on paper is because we want to tell our brains, I've put this in a safe place. I've listened to this idea and I've put it in a safe place. I may use it now, I may use it later, okay? If you don't have that kind of thinking or that kind of idea in your mind that we're putting them, we're allowing ourselves to explore all the possibilities, we're capturing the possibilities and we're putting it in a safe place. Even if that safe place is a folder that you've called customers, possible customers, and you just capture them all there, right? What this does is it takes that idea out of the loop in your head that may pull you off course later on. Because sometimes in this journey, and we all know this, in this journey, it can get hard. So we might get distracted and say, but if I tried them, maybe I have the wrong customer. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But follow this process. Follow this process and trust what you find. So brainstorm it, capture it, and then look at it. And this is the next stage. Once you've captured all the ideas, you've informed your brain, I have all these ideas captured. I'm not throwing them away. I've kept them in a safe place in this folder that I have marked customers, okay? And the next thing we're going to do is build a sieve, a big sieve, because we want to see, you could have 10, 20, 30, 40 possible customers, possible customer avatars, categories, segments, whatever you want to call it, but we call them customers, customer types. So you have all of these people that are possible customers. How do we choose? So we choose by building a sieve. And there are two things in the sieve that we sieve for, okay? We are sieving for two things. The first one is resonance, okay? And the second one we're sieving for is profitability, okay? We need both. Resonance makes us happy and profitability makes us viable, okay? And also happy, ultimately. <laughs> okay, so in our sieve and in our long list of customers, that are our possibilities for the future, we first test for resonance. And resonance is, comes from all the work we've been done, doing over the last few episodes. And we are looking for, we are looking for, does it feel right? Does it click? Do I like them? Does it make sense? Do their values align with mine? Last week, we looked at the brand inside and we did an exercise to help us ascertain our own values. And we were really, really specific. We just chose four or five values that we, of how we want to do business. It's exactly how we want to do business. And if that's how we want to do business, then we want to choose customers that have similar values to us or whose values can align with us, okay? And I remind you that in, uh, there's a link in the bio that tells you uh, there's a mini free mini course where you can actually do that exercise okay so do that exercise of brand values and see are those customers values aligned with mine tell me more about them find right about each of these customers as much as you can that gets you inside their heads and who they are and will they be easy for you to work with do they click do you like them because if you like them, then you can start to understand them. You can understand their needs. You can understand their pain points. Sometimes you can empathize with their pain points 
and it actually drives you even deeper to understand a little bit more at how, at how you can serve them better and even in more unique ways. And it allows you to grow your products and services in ways because you start to really like your customer. If you don't like them, you can't serve them best. And we want you always working in a space where you are serving them best because when you are at your best, then you make the biggest impact in the fastest way possible. You get deep in under what your customer needs simply because you understand them and you can give them more value in different ways and expand what you do that actually creates a business that's capable of growth. So check for resonance. Check that their values are aligned with yours. That's the key thing. And you can't check if your values are aligned with theirs and vice versa unless you know your own. And that was last week, okay? The second thing that I want to bring to your attention is the other part of this sieve we are building, and that's profitability, okay? Because it has to be about money. I make this assumption that we are all in business to make a profit. We have other bigger purposes. We've discussed them. We've discussed the reason we're in business beyond making money. We've discussed our why, our purpose, our mission, our vision. But in order to be viable and sustainable, we have got to make a profit, okay? So we must ch first check that our chosen customers, the ones that resonate with us, actually have the money to buy from us, okay? So, and we have to know also that there are enough of them there. So when you did your first scan in your sieve to see if these customers resonated with you, that you knew them well enough, you may find that those 40 customers actually distilled down to about four or five. That's generally what I see happen. Distill it down to four or five because you cannot target any more than four or five. And in actual fact, at any point in time, I'd be advocating that you really shouldn't be targeting any more than three customer types at any one point because your brain just can't do it and you don't have the resources always to do it, no matter what size you are. When you're targeting, you're building a process to actually understand that customer, to fulfill their needs, to adjust your product, to adjust your pricing, to make sure that that fits. And you can't hold 50 of them in your mind at one point in time, and your purse strings can't hold 50 of them at any one point in time. So focus. In the first part of our sieve, we check for how much we understand them, how much of what we've built resonates, how much our brand is aligned with their, their values. And then we look a little bit deeper. And we ask this question of, is there enough of them? Is there enough of a market there that's accessible? Not, is there enough women of age 16 in the world, men of age 30 in the world? We go deeper, we go deeper into pain points, challenges, understanding, and we will focus on this next week. But we need to know first, is there enough customers of that type that are accessible, that we can access? that we know how to reach. Because if the barrier is too high to reach them, then the cost, cost is too high to serve them. So first question, is there enough of them there for there to be a market in this for me? Question number one in the profitability question. And the second question I have is, do they have a budget to work with me? Do they have a budget to buy my product or service? And how do we know if they have a budget? This is where we poke, we do some market research. And an easiest way of kind of understanding about do they have a budget is, what would they spend their money on if they didn't spend it with me? Who would they spend their money on if they didn't spend it with me? So if they buy products like mine, who are they buying them from? Have a look at them. If they're buying services like mine, or something that's comparable to mine, where are they buying those services? Who are they buying those services from and how often? And we can start to ask these questions in things like um, in your Instagram stories, uh, as a piece of research on a, your LinkedIn account, you can ring them and ask them. So when you're trying to solve this problem, when you're trying to buy this product or service, where are you buying it from? And typically, how much do you spend? And how often do you spend it? Because we want to know if our product or service is a one-time purchase 
or is it a repeating purchase that affects our revenue model okay so start to dig a little bit deeper ask questions straight out how much do you spend on this every year like don't be shy to just ask that question how much do you spend on this each year and generally who do you buy it from and as you start to go down and explore that route the other questions will come that help you solidify that answer but in your sieve you have to start with resonance and knowing there's enough of those customers that you can actually reach and they have enough money to buy from you okay and this is the first step in understanding the customers that are right for your business okay and just want to check if there's something else that i wanted to say oh yeah the other part of the question which was choosing the right how do i choose the right customers for me and how to how do i say no to the ones that aren't and this is if they don't answer those if you can't answer those questions positively around resonance and profitability then they are the wrong customers for you and you really need to understand that because choosing the wrong customers stunts your growth, takes you off track and takes and holds you in this space of non-profit for too long. So spend the time to understand the customers that are right for you and be brave enough to say no to the customers that don't fit because they are simply a distraction from where you are meant to be and who you are meant to serve. And that stops your growth. Okay. We call it opportunity cost, but very simple terms. It's a waste of time, okay? Stops you from where you could be making the money, okay? So my closing thoughts for you are build the sieve, choose the customers that fit. And as you do this exercise, come back to me with questions, put them under the comments and I'll answer. I will help as much as I can. This is a really key part of this whole process of growing your business. Choose the right customers for you because the right customers matter.